my topic has a bit a little change from the original one. The new one is the value cost short plan for migratory shorebirds conservation insight from count and stable isotope based on feeding gills and the body size. Uh, that's a lot of evidence as showed by other uh, uh, research. The uh, reclaim in the Yellow Sea has caused the population decline of many species in this flyway. Uh, uh, for animal and uh, also the migratory birds, some of them have the adapt uh, uh, behavior plastic. They can adapt to new environment introduced uh, reduce, uh, induced by human. Uh, for for the coast, uh, for the coast, when the natural wetland converted uh, to the artificial wetlands, for example, agriculture pond, open veg field, and some birds may adapt to the new environment. And uh, if the bird cannot adapt and uh, they will die or disappear. One of the most important habitats of the artificial wetland in the coast is the uh, soil plan. Uh, it usually considered as the function wetland because it can support lots of the large number of shorebirds or, uh, around the world. For example, in the Mediterranean, South America, and in China, or especially in the Yellow Sea, there were lots of soil plan. Uh, one of the largest salt pans the, in the northern north of Bohai Bay called the Nampu salt pan. Uh, we can find the Nampu salt pan, it's very large, it usually is 300 kilometers square, which a lot of birds uh, during the migration season. This is a photo of black tail godway. And uh, we can find a large size like a black wing steel, quite our set, and a small size when extinct. They were feeding in the salt pan during high tide, also some species will also do feeding during the low tide, uh, along the edge of water or when the water level was quite low for some point. Mm, but we also can find some species like the butter gold weight and the great plover and the great knot. They mainly just rooting in the soap pan, they very feeding in the soap pan. So what's, what's the fact leader to the difference using soap pan by different shop species this is a question we are interested in. We know the shoppers have different shape of view and they have lots of many different uh, feeding, feeding strategy, uh, like packing, probing, and uh, swapping. Uh, so different shoppers can classify as different feeding views, like the regional surface foraging, uh, tackle surface foraging, also the electrical foraging or, or the water surface foraging species. In the different uh, feeding gills, we occupy different uh, habitat, and the uh, habitat use also can associate with their uh, body size, which means they have different leg and accept different uh, water level uh, in, in the environment. And we know the soil pan will always covered by soil water, and it's different, different from the uh, tidal flat, which will cover and not cover by tidal cycle. So we have a hypothesis that maybe the feeding gills in the body size lead to the difference using soil pan by different shopper species. So we have carried out and research uh, or the soil pan, uh, different species using the soil pan in the tidal flat in the Nampu soil pan uh, in Northern Buhan Bay. We, uh, this research system including both the tidal flat and the, the soil pan uh, in the Nampu, in the Indian Rwanda wetland. Uh, we combined the uh, method of the low tide count and the stable isotope to reveal the habitat use. Uh, for the low tide count, we find we can know the job distribution between two habitats and uh, using the stable isotope, we can know their, their diet contribution from two habitats. For the low tide count, we count both habitats during the low tide at the same time from 2014, 2018. And we know their uh, number in different habitats, and then we use the general linear model to detect the, any uh, different the, the number different between two species between two habitats, and then we also use the general linear effect model to uh, to detect the whether the yield and the body size has has the significant effect on their percentage in two habitats. Uh, for stable isotope. We catch in bird and we take their plasma and the red cell, which is reflect uh, short and the long term of their diet. And we also collect the potential food from the soil pan and the tidal flat. 
So we dried all sample and we powered and weight and then tested the, the carbon and the nitrogen and stable isotope. Or in SOPAN, we collect three potential food and the phone title flat, we collect uh, uh, four type of food and we put the, all the, the value of the <coughs> potential food and the value of plasma and the red cell from birth and also trophic discrimination factor into the dual stable basin mixing model. You know, now we can have the result or the diet percentage from, uh, for each species, they are diet from two habitat. First, let's have a look at the count result. Uh, from the low tide count, we can find uh, the most of the water surface foraging species like the black green steel and part of a sand, the marsh sand pepper. And it has significant high number in the soap and the tidal flat. Also for black tail gold and the shepherd tail sand pepper. And the other two species, the common red shank and the red next thing, they all they should have, they use both habitat in the number, no significant difference between habitat. And all other species, they have the significant high number in the tidal flat than in the soap pan. And from the uh, genome, genome, genome more mixing model, we can find uh, when the water surface foraging species usually have a high percentage in the soil pan or the number uh, in the soil pan. And for the other two feeding gills, <clears throat> only the small size of the other feeding gill has significant high, number, high percentage in soil pan than the tidal flat. Uh, but when the body, large, medium, the larger size of these two feeding gills, the tackle surface foraging and the visual surface foraging, foraging uh, they have a very low percentage uh, in the soil pan. So we can confirm the low tide count, we can find the water surface foraging and the small and the some media size of the uh, tactical foraging space and the visual surface foraging space <clears throat> uh, can have more possibility to yielding the soil pan. And this is the step I stop of the uh, food and the blood or the short burst. Uh, this is, we can find the, the food from the tidal flat was significant, significant from the food from the soil pan, both on the nitrogen and the carbon isotope. Uh, we can find some species like the butter gold wheat and red knot and gray knot. They have stable value uh, close to the food from the tidal flat. And uh, the <clears throat> some species like marsh sand pepper, rennet sting, and the kilo sand pepper, they have close have a stable value close to the salt pan. This is for plasma, and also it's similar for the red cell. And uh, now this is a combined result. This is the result of the uh, number in the percentage in the salt pan during low tide for these twelve species. And this is the diet percentage from soil pan for this species. We can find the, the <coughs> uh, count result of the percentage from soil pan was highly correlate, correlated with the diet percentage from soil pan. Uh, for the species like the uh, marsh tan pepper, which means the water surface foreign species, and the other media and the small uh, visual or tactical species, they have. Uh, over 50% of the diet from soil pan, and they also feeding, they have a high number in the high percentage in the soil pan when uh, during the count. For other species like a bottle gold weight and the red knot and gray knot, uh, they have below 50% diet from soil pan, uh, but or they all, during the low count, almost no using uh, soil pan as feeding one. Uh, we can find although although the, these species uh, do not feeding in the soil, uh, feeding in the soil pan during low tide, they have still uh, percent uh, nearly 4, 20 to 40, 50 percent or died from soil pan, which indicate indicate this species may still yielding the soil pan during high tide or during at night for feeding. Uh, so we can. Uh, Guild and the body size both will affect the, the using of soap pan for all these short bursts. But why this uh, two factor will affect? Uh, uh, we think first one reason maybe the two, two uh, very different environment between tidal flat and the soap pan. 
because the tidal flare were covered by water and uh, during high tide and they will expose in low tide. But for soap pan, it will um, always covered by water. And uh, when the water was not uh, uh, very high and it's very suitable for the water surface, water surface foraging species to feeding. And uh, that's also another reason is the different food in the two habitat. Or the food in the tidal flat were buried or with the shell or escape very quick. And for the food in the soap pan, is they are usually small and on the surface and then without shell and very easy for the species like the black wing steel and the outside the packing or slapping on the surface or the on the edge on the soap pan. Another reason we think maybe because of the salt stress, because the uh, salinity in the soap pan is much higher than water in on the tidal flat. When the bird feeding in the soap pan, they had enlarged their soap gland to ignorate their salt, which means they will cost energy. For, for some species like the, the black wing steel and the uh, other species with the long and the point bill or the uh, narrow point bill, they can use the surface tension transport, which can reduce the intake of the salt and uh, they can uh, reduce the energy cost for salt. So the equation, but for some large species, uh, bills with large large bill species like the body of the weight, uh, they are, it could they may could not use surface tension transport. So if they're feeding in soap pan, they may need a lot of the energy uh, to equate the salt. And we know uh, some species in this flyway has de declined sharply during these two or seven decades. For example, the Renac sting and the, in the black wing steel and the <coughs> clear sand paper. And in this research, we find the yeah have very high diet percentage from the soap pan. For example, the next sting with nearly 90% of the diet will come from the soap pan. So we think the soap pan is very important for this endangered and the sharply declined species. Uh, but uh, in number soap pan, we can find the Usually, the water level is very high, and when we only 30% of the surface of soap pan can potentially function as a foraging area for migratory shorebirds. And if we, as in, in other places, in, for example, in the Mediterranean, soap pan will be draining for the uh, catching fish or other activities. And when the <coughs> tidal, when the soap pan was exposed, and the lots of birds. Uh, uh, large size or, uh, or all the feeding gills were feeding in the soap pan. I think it, if we can uh, uh, for some time draining the, the pond and the activity for the bird friendly, it will uh, provide a more suitable habitat for the birds. So we have uh, uh, several conclusions in this research. First is the water surface foraging in the small and the medium size visual in the tackle foraging species rely on the soap pan for foreign ground and the bio morphology seems to be one of the main determinants on the use of soap pan. And uh, if we operation the, the soap pan, <coughs> also consider the feeding requirements of this, or this feeding gills, uh, it will provide a more suitable feeding habitat for these short birds, among which are the several declining and the threatened species. And lastly, we all still want to highlight the importance of the remaining natural tidal flights for some species like butter gold weight. Uh, they could not totally rely on the uh, <coughs> artificial weather line, for example, soap pan for their feeding ground. So, okay, I would like, finally, would like to thank to the uh, National Science Foundation of China and the WF and the SE Foundation, and also uh, my professor and my <coughs> colleague and a lot of my volunteers. And thank you, everyone. And uh, thank you for your patience.